Hello, people. It is Awakened Sheeple. And I'd like to say it's December 5th. It is 5.30 p.m. And I've been trying to make videos, but I keep making them too long or I get off topic. So this one's going to be short and sweet, and I promise it's going to be short and sweet. So uh, I've been asking the Lord to increase in my life and may I decrease. And this is the way he represented it. So I'm over here on this black end, right? I'm the human. I'm over here. God's over here on this other point right here. That's the magnetic thing, so it'll spin. Okay, so you just so you can see what it is. Okay, so here I am, and I'm on earth, and Jesus is in heaven. And I, I'm praying, and I'm praying, and I'm believing, and I'm believing, and I'm asking God to help me. And pretty soon, I'm standing up here in the spirit, and the Father, in the meantime, is down here in me. Now, while he's down here in me, this is what he's doing. Okay? The Lord is stretching you out, and when he has you stretched out, he picks out all of the things that are undesirable in you, that, that are causing you the problems in your life. And the things that you want to keep is probably the problems that you have in your life. And you don't even realize it. But he will fix all of these things if you ask him to. And that's what increasing and decreasing is about. So when I asked him to um, enlarge my heart or make me feel again, because it was, it's in the Bible, it's in the Word of God, you know. So pray that you feel love and all this stuff. And I never really felt any love for most other people, uh, three years ago, my favorite slogan was, I hate everybody equally. Hmm. So, and now I, it, now that's not, that's the opposite of me now. Cause I said, Lord, I need change. And that night, oh boy, I got to move. And so, you know, and probably seven months ago, I told the Lord, I need change because my life is not going the way I want it. My back's broken and I I'm in too much pain to already even move or work. I refuse to go to the hospital. I will not go. And I'll pray to you, Jesus. If you're real, heal me. So he healed me. And it took a lot of praying and telling him, hey, I'm sorry that I've done these sins. And it says it in the Bible that these things are bad. And if I'm doing these things, let's take them out of my life and let's make some changes. And so he, he took me at my word. And so I noticed right away, I don't learn like everybody else. I can't take in the word of God like everybody else. I mean, everybody's different, unique, special. Uh, he said I was a different breed and like the knot in the wood or the burl. And he even made a joke one time I was in a vision with him. I was walking through a garden and he was like, for instance, look at this beautiful tree. There's no knots in it. And I just leaned up against it. And I'm like, well, there's a knot leaning up against it right now. <laughs> and I started laughing and he's laughing. The question I had asked him right before that was teach me divine humor. Just like that. Um, I asked the Lord yesterday. I was like, Lord, I need to practice on somebody and I'm getting tired of trying to make videos and delete them. Because every time I try to make a video and I get into preaching on the word of God, I start burping and I don't know why. It, driving me nuts. Uh, but I just don't learn like everybody else. So I went to him with all kinds of questions, like stuff that you don't find in the Bible. And I, you want to be my God, you're going to have to answer me. You're going to have to tell me. I mean, I'm not going to play games. You want me to be serious? You need to be serious with me. I mean, I was straight up. And uh, he likes that to a point. <laughs> okay, folks? Take me at my word when, and take him at his word. Don't provoke him to anger. But be humble and bold. Meek, yet weak. Keys. Um, the weak part, I didn't understand that until today. I'm like, well, I don't really look like a weak man. I don't feel like a weak man. I'm not a coward. I don't have any fear. You took that all from me. And if you want me to walk up to somebody and preach to them, grab a Bible, let's go. Uh, but what does this weak part mean? And so I, you know, he taught me you're weak without me because you need me for everything to answer all these questions, to get you to heaven. I mean, all of it. So he said, you took me back to the beginning, or you wanted to go to the beginning. And I'm like, well, yeah, I wanted to go to the beginning. I want to see all this stuff. And he's like, no, that was not your question. And he, so he shows me. And it's like, blam, I'm there. I'm looking at this sky, and it's all boiling black and white clouds. The light's dim. 
You couldn't see a light source. And there's a superimposed mass of Christ across. Jesus is right next to me. I never get to see his face because I saw him 25 years ago or so when I was drowning. I saw the face of God and he had absolute sadness in his, hot, in his eyes because if I died at that moment, I was not going where he wanted me to be and he was upset with me. And that's when I saw the face of God. And um, I didn't need to see it after that. And I just pray every day that I don't ever see that look again because it made my heart hurt when I looked at his, into his eyes. And so, I mean, everything changed for me. Everything changed for me. The, the closer I get, the, the more he shows me. The superimposed cross is, is right there in front of the clouds. And it's big. And then I look down towards the bottom because he's like directing my attention down to it. And I see this like bl white blue light. And it looks like energy worms. They're not worms. They look like a little spermicide almost. But I've been drawn on my whole life and I never even realized why. I mean, it's part of everything I draw. I've got these teardrop shaped looking things in them. It just, my flowers, uh, my hearts, everything has got this same, same pattern. And now I know I've been drawing, drawing it all my life is because I would ask one day and he's been showing me. A little bit at a time. He's like, do you need confirmation? Look down. And I look down in front of me and everything I draw has these like worms, like things like that. Things like that. I mean, when you look at this right here, these were what was spinning around that cross, the bottom of the, the base of the pole going up to the cross beams. Now, there was nothing above the cross beams. That's reserved for something else. I don't quite know. But it was below the cross beams, to the cross beams and below. And I couldn't even tell if it was planted in the dirt or if it, we were in the air. But I was ready to put my tinfoil hat on and I was ready for a seatbelt and the mothership to show up. Buckle up, Scotty. Because, I mean, it looked that weird. So I spent about a week and a half, this past week and a half, what is that image? Because it'll pop into my mind once in a while when I'm doing something, talking to him. It'll just pop in and I'm like, what is that? And it does not fall in line with, you know, what does my spirit look like? And you no, know, that is what your spirit looks like before you're put into the body. And I was like, what? And like, yeah, that's where you're born. And that's what it looks like when you're put into your body. So I got to see that. It was amazing. And please, if you do not learn the same as somebody else, just take it to the Lord and ask him to make corrections. Ask him that you may decrease and that he may increase. And when he comes down into your life, he will make all the changes required. Praise Jesus in his most holy name. May you be blessed this day and every day. Have a wonderful time, folks. Stay in prayer because last week everything changed.